love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. The mighty hand and outstretched arm. His love endures forever. God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever. of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever.
have a seat. It's nice to see everybody tonight. I just have a few announcements I would like to go over um, very briefly. Backpack giveaway that we talked about a couple weeks ago. I have your paperwork. So if you signed up to get a backpack for your child, please see me. Um, this is your ticket into the event. It's going to be, and if you haven't signed up, see me and we could figure something out. Um, it's going to be Saturday, July 25th at 9.30 at Carl Hayden High School. The event is not here, so nobody show up here on the 25th. Um, it's going to be 9.30 at Carl Hayden High School. All you need to do is to bring your ticket and just come get your backpack and school supplies. So please see me after service. I just want to make sure you guys get that before the 25th. Um, also, the address is 3333 West Roosevelt, no, yeah, Roosevelt Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85009, Carl Hayden, okay? So please see me after service. Um, also, this Friday, the 17th, we have the women's ministry at this time. Juanetta is going to share a little bit about the women. Good evening. 
Where are all the ladies in the house? <laughs> Woo-hoo, that's what I'm talking about. Just want to uh, encourage you to come to this Friday's monthly Women Reaching Women meeting. It's going to be called Anchor Your Soul. And so um, Pastor Cheryl is going to have an amazing message for you. There's going to be awesome praise and worship. And just wanted you to, to encourage you to invite a friend, invite a neighbor, invite someone that needs to be saved, delivered, set free. Um, it's going to be an amazing night. Um, there's going to be food, fellowship, and a whole lot of fun. So we'll see you this Friday night, right? 6.30 p.m. this Friday. Thank you. Also, don't forget men's and women's Bible studies every Wednesday at 6.30 in the kitchen and in the um, youth building. The men are starting a new one. It's called Soul Detox. So please come and be a part of that. Um, we also have outreach this Saturday. We switched it around. It's not going to be on the 25th. Yay, outreach. <laughs> We normally have it the last Saturday of the month, but because we're doing the backpack giveaway, we switched it, and it's going to be the 18th. So it's going to be this Saturday, 9.30, coffee and donuts at 9.30, and then they go out into the neighborhood and invite people to come to church. So please be a part of that. Um, at this time, let's get the ushers to prepare for the offering. And as we do that, Renee has an announcement. So Renee? Yay. Yay, Renee. Renee. Praise God. I want everybody to mark their calendar for Friday, August 7th. It's the first Friday in the month of August. And the reason why is because the City of Phoenix sponsors an event called First Fridays. It's a secular event, and thousands of, peop of people walk through there. And Pastor Ronnie, he is so passionate about evangelism and outreach that he is there ministering every First Friday. So we have the opportunity to dance at that event. Yes. But keep clapping after I mention this because we want 100 of you to dance with us. Now, absolutely. And I know you're thinking, dance, you know, I don't know, no, no. It doesn't matter what shape you're in. It doesn't matter what size. It doesn't matter if you have rhythm, if you don't. The most important thing is the number of people that we have because the sheer number of people that we have, when we walk out into that street, if the only movement we're doing is marching, it's going to get their attention. We're all dressed alike. They're going to come see what we're doing. And when they come, we're going to tell them about Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so I would encourage you to, to come out. We've already have uh, several people that have committed. We're going to have our first practice this Sunday immediately after service. And if you're remotely thinking about it, just come and see how simple the moves are. Because when you come and see, you're going to be like, oh, I can do that. I, I tell you, we're going to customize the choreography to meet everyone's skill set. So afterwards, oh, oh, by the way, um, Laura, she's our beautiful model. This will be our dance uniform, our dance attire for the event, blue jeans and Doris's t-shirts. If you don't have uh, one of Doris's t-shirts, a plain white t-shirt will suffice. Mary Elena has the sign-up sheet. Awesome, awesome. And Cindy is going to um, help teach the choreography so you can see either one of us after service. Praise God. How many people are we going to have commit? Yeah, amen, amen. Thanks, Renee. Let's give them a hand. So please see them in the bookstore after service. If you are interested in that, just sign up so we have an um, amount knowing who's going to show up this Sunday. Okay, at this time, um, we're going to prepare for the offering. Isaac, do you mind praying for the offering, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for this opportunity that you gave us to be in your house, Lord, to worship you, Lord, to thank you and to bless you, Lord. Now that we prepare ourselves with our finances to bless you back of all that you have given us, Lord. Bless each and every one who is pouring it, Lord, and especially a special blessing on the people who are unable to do it, Lord, that in the days to come they may be able to do it joyfully and lovingly, Lord. Bless each and every one. Use the money that is collected for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. As Pastor Robert and the team um, start singing, just take your time, prepare your offering. The ushers will take the offering. Thank you.
mano. Most of you and both, I know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his grace and his mercy. Come on now. Go ahead. Lift up your hand. Come on. Start thinking. In your own, in your own, your own words. Come on. Start to thank him right now. For his love, his mercy, his patience. Come on now. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Come on now. Thank you for the cross. minutes right now. Just a few more minutes. What a privilege and what an honor that God has given us once again to gather here tonight. Another opportunity to lift up his glorious and awesome name. There's some that didn't wake up this morning. Did you hear what I just said? We have an opportunity here tonight. What a privilege to worship him, to praise him, and an opportunity here tonight to walk out of this place not the same way we came in to walk out of this place getting some things straightened out and, um, and moving forward for the glory of God we have an opportunity because we're still breathing that even yesterday or 10 hours ago if there was some ugly right now is what matters every one of us has an opportunity to get it right leave this place moving forward learning growing from it and not looking back in Jesus name and going forward to be the champions that God's called us to be for a few minutes, lift up your hand, just worship him right now and start to thank him. Come on now. Woo. Come on now. Whoa. Wash us, cleanse us, forgive us, deliver, heal, restore. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Jesus, help. It's a great prayer. Jesus, help. Come on now. Hallelujah. He's your answer. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. On the third day, he rose from the grave. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's here. The presence of God is here. And the same power that raised him from the grave, that resurrection power is in this place right now. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody.
that one more time, one more time. I want to sing that one more time. Walk and wash. and say thank God for the blood of Jesus amen praise the Lord thank God for the blood of Jesus thank God for the blood of Jesus amen thank God for the blood of Jesus thank God for the blood Seven people, seven people, come on now. Seven people now. Thank God for the blood. Praise the Lord. You know what? Get back on your feet, find seven more people and say, Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. Come on now. Seven people you haven't, yeah, seven people. Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. Come on now. Come on. Seven people now, come on now. Hallelujah. Is that seven? Was that seven? Did you get seven? God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. Let's get back on our feet and go find seven more people that you haven't gone to. And thank God for the precious, precious, precious blood of Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. The precious, precious, precious blood of Jesus. My God. Come on. 
the precious 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 blood of Jesus hallelujah thank God we'd all be in trouble my God thank God for the Lamb of God Jesus that humbled himself unto death shed his blood for you and me oh hallelujah 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 To him be all the glory and all the honor. Come on now. Come on now. To him be all the glory and all the honor. King of kings, Lord of lords, amen. Jesus is his name. Come on now, let the redeemed of the Lord say so in this place. My God, my God, my God. Woo! In the name deliverance in the name come on now restoration power liberty freedom salvation now if you're gonna shout clap celebrate would it not be for the one that shed his blood for the washing of our sins for salvation come on now we're not victims or we're victors through Christ Jesus we have a hope, we have a future. Come on now. Ah, oh, somebody shout Jesus!
He healed my body 
on out. This next celebration, shout and praise is for what he's about to do in our lives, in your lives, in your family, for your future, your purpose, your assignment. Come on now. The enemy's not going to have the final say. He's not going to have the final word. Jesus is going to have the final word. Come on. Somebody, do you believe it? Look at somebody. Come on, testify. The Korean. Come on now. Death and life and the power of the tongue. Come on. Come on. Start to create your future with your words. Stop speaking the lies of the enemy. Speak the word of the truth. Hey. I've been set free. I've been set free. Jesus under my Hallelujah. Shout, I got the victory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some, some. That was um tonight. That was um. That's good medicine right there. Because what we just did right now, as the spirit of God, because that's is. Instead of focusing as we came in, because many as we came in were still focusing on the problem. But when you start to look up, not that your facts and your circumstances we're not saying that. But when we said yes to Jesus, we don't respond to the world's way of thinking because we're not of this world anymore. We're in it, but we're not of it. So watch this. So the facts can be real. We're not, we're not saying they're not real. The circumstances could be real. But the bottom line is now, the person that has the final say, if. 
we believe, the Bible says, if we believe, we shall see his glory. So, so, so. His word is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word became flesh. So, the word of God, the Bible, it's living and it's powerful. It'll make the cricket places straight. What's impossible in the natural, God will make possible. But God is looking for some crazy Christians that, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> All right. wrong word. That, 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 that will have a, just, just a little bit of crazy faith to believe that he's not a man that he should lie. So in other words, what he's looking for is a receiver to, to, uh, 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 for his word and to run with it because we have to do the possible. He'll do the impossible. The possible is us picking up the word of God, believing the word of God, and the miracle stuff is his business. So he's looking for some receivers to catch the football, the word, because you can't score a touchdown without the football. Look at someone say, y y you need the Bible. <laughs> you need the word. So he's looking on the earth for some receivers to receive his word. And then when they receive it, when they receive it, to run with it, to put the running action to their faith. Faith through thought works is dead. And, 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 and then God says, I'll take care, I'll block, I'll do all this, and, you know, and I'll get you to the, the end zone. So what God is saying is, I just need you to receive believe and start practicing on your touchdown dance in other words your celebration for your breakthrough your miracle your answer yeah and to for his glory so what we're doing right now is today when we are praising him and worshiping him and i'm not saying that the things around us aren't real, but what we're saying is, you brought me this far, and if you were faithful back here, we believe our shout, our celebration. That's what we're, we're saying. We know that you're going to bring us the rest of the way. Now, watch this. Our clap and our celebration here is your faith being released because what you're saying is, I came in here. And I know I'm still going through some stuff. But I know what your word and your promises say about me for my future. Even though, you know, there's some things that still haven't manifested. You're clapping your celebration right now. That's your faith saying to the Lord, I know if I don't grow weary in doing good, Galatians 6, 9, in due season, I'm going to reap a harvest. So all I've got to do is hold on to that football. Hold on to the word. Because this timing's perfect. Hold on to the, look at your neighbor and say, hold on to the word. And what we're telling him today is we're thanking him in our celebration because we know if it wasn't for him, most of us would be dead right now. Once going to hell, not going to heaven. Our celebration is thanking him right now for the cross, the blood. Our celebration, our clap here was we're praising him and lifting him up and saying thank you for what you're doing in our midst. But as we continued, what we were doing is we're taking our focus off the problem. Some of you came in, your focus was still on the problem. 
But something shifted. And all of a sudden, you started to, and you started to, and you started to, and Jesus, and the blood, and, and then, and then a smile came to your face, and, and then, and, and, and I don't know about you, I just started thinking of his mercy and, and his good, and then I started thinking again here right now, I was like, man, he's, like, just the things he's done in the Bible for others, and he's not a respecter of persons, so I just started to think about, not the problems anymore, but the possibilities of what he can do on my behalf because he's crazy about me. Look at somebody and say, he's crazy about me. No, you know, go five, five, more, five more people. He's crazy about me. Yeah, he is. He came to this earth because he loved me so much. Hey, that, that's our G. He's crazy about me. He's crazy about you. He came to this earth. So it might be a couple saying, what in the world's going on? Listen, what's going on is this. What, we're, what just happened right now is many just took their focus off their circumstances because the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. If we walk by sight, then we start to respond to the circumstances and the facts, and then our next step is dictated by the circumstances, the facts, and the enemy. But when we start to walk by faith, our eyes are not, not by sight. We're not looking at the Natu we're not looking because what's seen is temporary. What's unseen is everlasting. We're not looking at the circumstance. We're not looking at the fact. We're not looking. At the, but we're looking at him. So now my next step is not dictated by the facts or the circumstances or the enemy. My next step is dictated by the word of God. And now my faith is starting to rise, as many here tonight, of the possibilities that if I am crazy enough to run with that, that there's power in his word, and then if I, and I, and I believe it, and, and watch me now, and speak it, because the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Job said you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So watch it. So we have to be, so now we, we, we believe it and we're carrying it and it's in us. And now it's starting to come out of our mouth. And, and, and your words create your future. So now I'm starting to speak what I believe according to his word. So now the possibilities are not possibilities anymore, the realities. Does God have any crazy Christians with just a little bit of crazy faith? You need to start working on your celebration touchdown dance because something's about to happen. You're about to score a touchdown for his glory, amen? You're about to. No, 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 no. You're about to score for the glory of God. You're about to. Some things are about to. Wow. So I just went from my focus on my problem to the possibilities. But they're not possibilities because I know the word. And now the possibilities are realities because I know he's not a respected person. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, but it started to stir the possible. Wow, okay, yeah. The word says, it. oh, wow, and possible. Oh, yeah. Well, and if he did it for that, and if he did it, and he opened up it. And, uh, and now it's not a possibility. But now it's like, you know what? No, that's for me. Yeah. Well, I just, I was going to, but I don't want to, I'll just. No, 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 no. Really. I just, and I don't want to like, t tonight, uh, as we just conclude i just want to just take a few minutes just to just to take a few minutes right now
And um, I know this is going to be a shift here, but um, <clears throat> my pastor um, in California that ordained me, Pastor Robert, and my father in the living room many years ago, um, um, my spiritual father, and um, um, some know who I'm talking about because you've seen him at conferences before, and um, great man of God. Um, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at without him, definitely. And, um, and uh, he went to be with the Lord yesterday. And uh, so uh, sad, but at the same time, we know that he's finished his race. We know where he's at. So we're getting ready to, I'm, I'm going to go do the funeral in California, but we're just, I'm waiting for his daughter to kind of get the, um, we're trying to figure out if it, next weekend or how we're, anyway, so, um, but we need to keep the family in prayer, and, uh, but I just, I was going to, I was going to take a few minutes just to, um, to say this, uh, great, great preacher, but his health towards the, the latter um, prevented him from really you know, um, speaking and, and ministering the way he did before. But I caught the tail end of some of his messages. It's a remarkable preacher. And, and I've, I've heard many, and I've, I, 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 I've been around enough now. As far as translating, not having somebody translating for you from Greek to English in, one, in the same message and not missing a word on either one, the best, number one. Number two, one of the most unique preachers of the gospel with the way he would deliver. I loved listening to him. And um, just phenomenal. He had some of the best messages. And I started to think about it, and I've shared this before, uh, 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 but that wasn't his greatest sermon or his greatest message. And he, I mean, he had some classics. Classics. But that wasn't his great, none of them were, that wasn't, or none of those were his greatest sermon. What made him so great, so awesome, um, what made him the man of God that he was, where it demanded attention. You know, it's just, you just, you wanted to go out of your way to do anything for him. He, you know, when he'd open up his mouth, you stop talking. You know, sometimes people talk, but no one's listening. Do you understand what I'm saying? This man spoke. You listened. And it wasn't because he demanded it. It was because of this one great sermon he preached that when he spoke, it demanded attention. And that sermon was his life. And did you know in this place here today, before we finish, I just want to just impart this. Every one of us, did you know, you know, you hear T.D. Jakes preach and Pastor Parsley preach and you hear Joyce Meyer teach and you're like, man, they're phenomenal. You know, you're just as phenomenal of preachers. Now, you might not be a capital P, but you're all little P's. Find three people and say, you're little peas. Because we're all preaching a message Monday through Friday. And you're pulpit of the people in front of you wherever you're at. And, 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 and so, so did you know that you're, you know, you, you also, you know, when someone said, man, that is a great message or a sermon by T.D. Jakes. And you're like, man, I could never even come close to doing something like that yeah you can you know how your life your life is a classic sermon it's a bestseller it's 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 impactful it's it demands attention and i just started thinking about his life and do we have pictures do i just wanted to show you guys some people don't know and where i just not there there he is the one with the glasses that's his son in the middle george there's Pastor Robert over there, and me with the Cubs jersey.
Well, I'm still alive. What do you mean? What do I look like now? And I'm just saying, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. And that was Pastor Panos when he came um, to um, the Osborne f- before we came here. And, he's, and, he was, and we were just getting ready for him to, to share. He had come to visit. And that's me again. Give me. Um, he, um, he was remarkable. Uh, his life. And just a couple things that stood out. And I just want to just, you know, they made him so, and I think that there's a lot to learn from this, from him. Number one, he was, everyone he came into contact with, he inspired, he stirred up. Um, just by what he did, not by what, really what he even said. One of the greatest soul winners I've ever seen. I'm in the airport with him. We're going, on, we went to Florida, New York. Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, one of the last trips that we were able, I, I, that God gave me the privilege of going with him before he was not able to really move around. And we're in the airport, and he's, you know, he's struggling, like, you know, can't can really move, you know, so I'm, I'm helping. And I'm like, okay, we need to get to the next flight. Okay, and you think, okay, we're, we're struggling to get there because maybe because, you know, he's because of his, you know, he's, you know, because he can't move as fast. And that's not the issue. He's giving out all these Bible tracts to everybody. <laughs> and I mean, and I'm, when, I'm, and when he's giving them out, he's not missing anybody. And I'm like, I get what you're doing, but we got to go. And I'm like, come on. You know, and so, and everyone in the know, that, and he had these little Bible tracts with a, 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 a smile, Jesus loves you. Little, uh, it was awesome. And, and every time I would see him do that, and then one time I was at, 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 at the, at the um, I went to the doctor's office with him in California one time, and we're in the waiting room, and man, he worked that room. <laughs> he did. By the time he was called to go in, he talked to everybody. Everyone got a track. He was like, you know, I mean, really, it, it, it was remarkable to see him operate and, and just the love of God and everyone receiving from him. And uh, he always had that smile, that smile, you know. And um, I remember when he used to come before I was saved, he, he had that smile. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And then finally, you know, and I used to go out the back door. I'm like, man, this guy, enough. No one can be that happy. <laughs> and do you realize that smile has never changed. And then when I got saved, that was the place I wanted to go get baptized, of course, and then he ordained. Uh, me, and, and I'm just saying, and you know what's awesome was, what a testimony, though. That smile that's there was consistent all the way through. And even through the difficulties, the hardships, the pain, physical issues. And I, and I went to see him. I, I've been, he would still be praising the Lord and that smile. But he didn't miss anybody. So when you got around him, he just stirred up your faith to be better. He, 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 was, a, he, he was, he walked away wanting to do more for Jesus. So when I think about his life and what we can learn from his life here is it's not what really what we say as much as what we do. And every one of us has the opportunity to impact lives daily and to inspire them. And here's how. By not speaking of them where they're at, but speaking of where God wants to take them. Building them up and then leading by example because they're watching. And I remember another time there was a conference, um, and he was a speaker. And this is like the first couple of years, and I just, and what he did was, because he was always thinking, <clears throat> conference, you don't give up your pulpit or opportunities like that. You just don't see that happen. He gets a hold of the, and he goes, you know what, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to speak on my slot. I want He's talking about me to take my spot. Like three years into this thing. 
And I'm thinking, wow, what man of God that has been in ministry for that many years on television, all of it, gives up the opportunity like that. And I thought about that because it wasn't about him. understood it wasn't his church it wasn't his people it was God's church it was God's people and it wasn't about him but he understood it was about Jesus and a world that needed him and as he went forward and he was getting older he needed to store up and build up and encourage the younger soldiers to, pa to pass the baton to go forward because we're all on the same team, and this isn't about I'm doing it. He was thinking about the kingdom. Look at someone say, we're on the same team. So when we go forward, another thing we can learn from his life, and I'll, I'll be, is, 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 is he was always thinking of how to enhance and increase the kingdom of God and giving people opportunities with the platform he was given to build them up, encourage them, because he understood that all hands need to be on deck. Individually, we're voices, but corporately, we're a force. We're not competing with one another. He gets all the glory and all the honor He's the healer. He's the deliverer. We're just vessels. So encourage one another. Sometimes in churches, we compete. There's a, like sometimes there's like my ministry, your ministry. That's his ministry. His, hers. What? We need to be about how can we help each other with the understanding that it's not about you. It's not about me. But God has entrusted us with his church and his people to share the gospel with others. So that was another thing I was just thinking about. And then the Bible said, disciples came to Jesus and said, who's you know, the greatest? The greatest. There was, a, there was a, a debate there about the greatest. And then he goes, the greatest is a servant. And he went on to illustrate that, Jesus did, by washing the disciples' feet. So think about that one. The inventor was washing the invention's feet. The potter was washing the clay's feet. The creator was washing the creation... When I thought about Pastor Panos, man of God, senior pastor, preached around the world, and every time we went over there, and Pastor Robert knows this too, and every time we stayed at his house, wake up in the morning, have breakfast ready for us. He's cooking for us. Would never allow us, he would always where he could tell somebody else to do, he was always doing for himself. With all the responsibilities and all that, that he had, he continued and to, never changed, would always be a servant and always put others before himself. And many that know, Pastor, you know I'm saying the truth. What a powerful message. What a powerful sermon. And here we are, we're fighting sometimes. People, I, to pre, I, I want to minister. And we think ministry is, we do to the pulpit. And then that's when I'm going to, no. Every one of us has an opportunity to minister every single day. Yeah. By serving, by helping, 
by humbling. But man, there's such a, in the church, there's also one of the areas that the enemy has used is there's such a arrogance and pride sometimes in the people of God that we're higher than somebody else. We get a couple of scriptures under our belt. And then, you know, and everybody else is. And uh, the Bible says before a man's fall comes pride. And apart from him, we can do nothing. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be where we're at. And I don't know any of us helped. The only thing we helped Jesus on the cross was our sin. I realized I was hitting that. The Bible says, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. It's not about titles. It's not about who's better. He gets all the glory. He gets all the honor. And it's about reaching others and how we can all work together to do that. We're not competing with one another. And he was unbelievable as far as, again, how he served. I mean, he saw Jesus in it all. He was always the first one. He didn't like, oh, can you do that? Oh, can you go get that? You'd have to tell him, sit down. I have it. When was the last time someone said, get, I, I. Or do we sit back saying, person just started. They need to do that. Because I'm all, you're not all that in the bag of chips at all. Amen. <laughs> Media without Jesus. Amen. Amen. So just a couple thoughts here. If you want to preach a great sermon, it's your life. And within it, the greatest is a servant. Serve. Serve. There's so many opportunities and so many ways to serve and to be Jesus to somebody. Be a witness. And then when people get around you, build them up. Encourage them. Every time I got around him, he inspired me. He made me feel like I can do anything. Let's strive that every time you come into contact with somebody, when they walk away, you inspire them just to believe just a little bit more that I can do something great for God. Which means not looking at people where they're at, but where God wants to take them. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, he went to be with the Lord. One of the greats, amen. So I appreciate if you guys keep the family in prayer. And uh, praise God. It's, it's kind of like you're happy again because of his health, you know, and it's like you know he's healed now and he's not struggling anymore. But it's still sad because he, he was special, amen. So praise the Lord, amen. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Panos. And the blessing he was on this earth to so many. In Jesus' name. Amen. If we can all stand to our feet. Are you glad you came to church? Amen. Amen. So praise God. I just want to close the service. As we close the service, I just want to give everyone an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. He's your miracle worker. Turn around. Everything starts with a relationship with him. There's only one way to heaven. 
His name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says one mediator between heaven and earth, Jesus. One that died on the cross and rose from the grave on the third day. The good gospel news is this. No matter where you're at and how, what you've, how, how much you've done of it, you're still breathing. Which means tonight, the grace and mercy of God is here. The love of God is here to get it right. To make sure that you have your passport to heaven, sins to be forgiven, and until the time comes to cross over, because death is not the only end, it's only the beginning, to do something great on this earth for his glory. Tonight's your night. If you've been in church and you've gone and you've fallen away, maybe a prodigal son, prodigal sister, just been away from the church, and you're like, man, I knew better, but would God give me another opportunity after knowing better, after I've been in church? Yes. Righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. Get back up. Get back up. All hands on deck. His mercies on you every morning. You woke up today. You have an opportunity to get it right and finish strong. It's not the way you start. It's the way you finish. And God is not intimidated with your sins, but he died for every one of your sins. Tonight's your night. If that's you on a count of three watching at home, your altar is right where you're at. God sees your heart. On the count of three, if that's you, I'm going to pray for you. I just want to see your hand. One, two, three. Just lift up your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see hands going up all over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. God bless. Let's do this. What a great night. Lord, we just thank you for your awesome presence in this place. Every hand that went up, and for the ones that are, are, are making their way up, for the ones that are not, I want you to look at your neighbor too in the midst of that, in the, in the process of that, and ask them, do you need to be up there? Maybe you just need somebody to encourage you to walk with you, okay? I'm willing to do that with you. Somebody just a little, just, some, just some, someone to walk with, amen? Don't worry about anybody else around you. We all have mess. Just get it right. Every hand that went up, I want you to stand, step out of your seat and start making your way up to the altar. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. No one leaving the No one leaving the sanctuary. No one leaving the sanctuary until we pray the prayer of salvation. This is a holy moment. Yes. Every hand that went up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Is a God Amen. Who loves me. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. This is awesome. And that is the place. Yes, yes, they're coming. This is awesome. This is awesome.
God's not here with condemnation. He's here with his mercy and his grace. His arms are open. Tonight's your night. Wait another minute. If there's anybody else, please. Let's sing one more verse. If there's anybody else, please, please, please. And we're going to pray. If there's anybody else in the next minute, please step out of your seat and make your way down here. Come on. Hallelujah. This is your night. This is your night. I know there's a couple more people. Please. Please. And take me to that place, thank Lord. You, thank you. To that secret place where Amen. I can be with Amen. you. Amen. Amen. And you can make me Amen. like you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. place where I can be with you and you can make me like you wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms wrap me in your arms hallelujah it's awesome after we pray we got altar workers to pray with you if you want some more prayer all the workers to make the way to everybody here in a second. I'm going to pray this prayer. Well, you can make your way around and just kind of surround them. If anybody else needs extra prayer afterwards, just make your way to the altar. There's somebody here to pray with you. The Bible says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That he forgives us as far as the east is from the west. When we call upon his name, precious blood washes us and cleanses us and gives us a new start a new chapter brand new can it really be that good yes it's like going to court you're busted you're caught on videotape there's no way out judge is about to give sentencing and you're going away forever and all of a sudden, though, when it was, it's the day of sentencing, you walk in and you have a new lawyer. That's what's happening here. And the lawyer's name is Jesus Christ. The judge looks at you and says, when did you, what's the date today? 14th, yeah, July 14th, well, July 14th, 
2015, about 8.51, made a change, and I said yes to Jesus. He shared some things with me, and I, I said, all right, let's give it a shot. And the judge goes, well, under these circumstances, and you know, the judge and your lawyer, the fa father, son, father, son. So, so the judge doesn't look at you anymore or what you did but he looks at your lawyer Jesus who is standing the gap for you and what he did for you and because of what he did for you the judge says case dismissed after all oh wait all that yeah, case dismissed charges are dropped like get out of my courtroom and go tell somebody what just happened and you never look at that tape again it's destroyed because he remembers our sins no more so don't go reminding or bringing back up what God says I've forgiven and it's over are you ready for case dismissed charges are dropped hey but then and go tell somebody how good Jesus is amen and what he did for you amen lift up your hands come on it's a sign of surrender let's all pray this prayer together Heavenly Father come to you tonight and I need you I'm a sinner and I need a Savior I believe you sent your son to this earth for me and those who call upon his name shall be saved so Jesus I ask you to come into my heart be Lord and Savior of my life wash me with your blood forgive me of my sins and renew a right spirit within me from this night forth I'm all yours use me for your glory I believe that I'm on my way to heaven my sins have been forgiven and my greatest days are ahead because your word decrees it and declares it that those who call upon your name Jesus shall be saved and I believe that you died for me rose from the grave and that you are the son of the living God so I believe tonight I am forgiven washed by the blood and my greatest days are ahead in Jesus name amen could someone praise the Lord could someone praise the Lord praise God if you need prayer we got people to pray for you God bless you we'll see you next service